Okay, let's unpack this. Have you ever felt like you're just staring at a mountain of technical information, trying to figure out what you really need to know? Today, we're diving deep into that exact challenge. We're exploring the uh, really complex world of core-level NAND chip programming, data recovery, and firmware diagnostics for mobile devices. And this isn't just basic flashing we're talking about. It's about understanding these you know, sophisticated tools that let technicians do advanced repairs, even critical data recovery. Yeah, it's fascinating how specialized these tools are. And our mission today really is to cut through some of that complexity for you. We've gathered insights on four uh, key players here. Flash 64 Ultra, Easy JTAG Plus, Medusa Pro 2, and the UFI Box. So the goal is to break down each one architecture, supported chips, how they're used in real life, and you know ultimately help you figure out which tool might be the best fit for what you need. Sounds good. Let's jump right in then with the Flash 64 Ultra. I mean, the name alone sounds pretty intense, like something futuristic. It gets called the modern NAND programming beast. What makes it uh, live up to that? Oh, it absolutely does. The hardware is genuinely cutting edge. You're looking at a dual core SO that's a system on a chip with its own built-in ASIC, an application-specific integrated circuit, mm -hmm. basically purpose-built for this stuff. And what's really impressive, full UFS 1.0 all the way to 4.1 protocol support. Yeah. UFS, universal flash storage, that's the standard in modern phones, so having that full range is huge. Future-proof. Plus, get this, it uses high-speed USB 3.2 Gen 1. It hits around 420 megabytes per second transfer speed on UFS. That's fast. It even has its own little IPS display inside, RGB status lights, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. It really feels like a next-gen tool. Wow, okay. 420 megabytes per second on UFS, that is impressive. But for a technician, you know, on the ground dealing with maybe a client's dead phone, how does that speed and tech actually help? Is it saving noticeable time or is it more for like really specific high-end tasks? That's a fair question. Raw speed isn't always the whole story, but here it often makes a big difference. Its power really comes from the deep control it gives you over different interfaces. So it sports UFS, obviously eMMC, microSD, even Huawei's nano memory format plus SPI-NR and NAND flash, and then you've got IC, UART, SPI, JTAG, debug access port. It's comprehensive in practice. That means you can do advanced reads and writes on, say, Samsung UFS chips, even edit the config descriptors. Those are critical chip settings. For data recovery, it's often a lifesaver. You can pull data from dead UFS chips by reading the RPMB, that's the secure memory block, the main user area, and the boot partitions. You can also do full chip ID changes, permanent data wipes, reflash firmware. Its strengths are definitely speed, deep UFS, and EMMC control, and they push out regular firmware updates too. And it's become quite popular for console NAND repair at the Nintendo Switch or even PS5 SSD modules. That versatility sounds really key, especially for critical recovery jobs. Yeah. But with all that power, are there any um, trade-offs, limitations people should know about. Yeah, a couple of things. First, it doesn't have tools for Android phone IMEI repair. That's yeah. important for some shops. And, well, the price. It's definitely up there, around $730. So it's a premium investment, no doubt. Point taken. Okay, moving on. Let's talk about a tool that's been around, a trusted name for many, the Easy JTAG Plus often seen as a sort of universal workhorse. Right, the Easy JTAG Plus. It's built on a solid, proven platform. An Air RM microcontroller paired with a Spartan 6 FPGA that's a field programmable gate array gives it flexibility. It supports both ISP in-system programming and JTAG debugging. And crucially, it monitors the VCC and VCCQ power lines during operations, which helps ensure stability. Interface-wise, it's USB 2.0 high speed, so you're looking at maybe 30, 40 megabytes per second on eMMC using the 8-bit mode. Not Flash 64 speeds, but reliable and decent for what it does. So how wide is its compatibility then? Can you walk us through some typical scenarios where a tech would reach for the Easy JTAG Plus? It covers a good range. eMMC from version 4.1 up to 5.1, standard NAND flash, SPI, NOR flash, ISP in 1-bit and 4-bit modes, and of course, JTAG debug access. A big plus is its support for various boards, Samsung, Qualcomm, MediaTek, Spectrum, often using custom pinouts. That broadens its reach quite a bit. Real-world use, it really shines in dead boot repair using either JTAG or ISP. You can dump and write the full eMMC, either raw or partitioned. And it's great for board-level JTAG work to unbrick devices, especially known for handling older LG and Samsung phones that way. Its strengths, definitely the huge active community around it, that's invaluable for finding solutions and pinouts. It has a power Powerful pinout database built in, good update support, and it can even program SPI BIOS chips. That community and database sound like massive advantages, especially if you're newer to this. But what about downsides? Anything tricky for new users? Well, the big one compared to the Flash 64 is no direct UFS write support. That's a key difference for modern devices. Also, setting up JTAG 
It can be complex if you're not familiar with it. You often need to understand board schematics and solder tiny wires. It's not plug and play. And like the Flash 64, no built-in Android IMEI tools. Okay. Now this next one sounds like it has a unique angle. Medusa Pro 2. You mentioned security features. Yeah. Here's where it gets really interesting, right? What's the deal with the smart card? Yeah, that's its defining feature, really. The Medusa Pro 2 uses a smart card for authentication. You need the card inserted and validated to actually use the tool. This adds a significant layer of security and uh, control. It makes it very appealing for places where data integrity and chain of custody are absolutely critical thing certified forensic labs. Hardware wise, it connects via USB 3.0, giving pretty good speeds. On UFS, it's around 100 megabytes per second read, maybe 55 right. Comes with an external voltage regulator, socket kits for common BGA chip types, 153, 169, 254, 221. All right, so that's smart card security. Yeah. Where does Medusa Pro 2 really shine then? Specific use cases, especially where that security is paramount. It supports UFS up to version 2.x, EMMC 5.0 and newer, plus ISP and JTAG modes. It also includes support for repairing Qualcomm NAND boot issues. Use cases often revolve around boot partition repair for Qualcomm and MediaTek devices. It does offer some limited IMEI repair functions, unlike the previous two. But yeah, the smart card security really tailors it for those certified lab or forensic environments. I mean, having that traceable, authenticated tool usage can be crucial. It also has a simple system for creating and extracting SRF files, secure repair files, which is handy for backups and repairs. So strengths, reliable flashing, especially with boot configuration, those limited IME security tools, and easy integration into a forensic workflow. That forensic angle makes a lot of sense. Right. But what are the drawbacks? Does that focus come with trade-offs for maybe more general repair tech? It does have limitations. A big one now is no support for UFS 3.0 or 4.0, so it won't work with the newest UFS chips hitting the market. And generally, the software updates tend to be a bit slower compared to something like UFI Box or Flash 64. That could be an issue if you need support for the very latest devices quickly. Okay, that brings us to the last one on the list, UFI Box. This one sounds like more of an all-rounder, maybe a modular solution, covering a lot of ground for Android and chip repair. That's a good way to put it. The UFI box is quite flexible. There's the main box and then an optional UFI dongle often used for software authorization. It typically uses USB 2.0 high speed for EMMC work, but you can get a USB 3.1 add-on module for faster UFS operations. Feature-wise for EMMC, it's very comprehensive. Full control over the chip ID, CID, the extended CSD register, partition management, FFU firmware flashing, factory erase functions, even RPMB resets. It covers a lot. And the software suite, you mentioned it being comprehensive. How does it manage to be that sort of all-in-one solution? And does it make things easier for someone juggling lots of different Android devices? The software is definitely a major strength. You get separate toolboxes, an EMMC toolbox, an Android toolbox, which covers standard flashing, fast boot commands, Qualcomm's Firehose Emergency Protocol, MediaTek Scatterfile flashing, and a UFS toolbox. The UFS toolbox even includes editing for gear config descriptors. The user interface is generally considered very user-friendly. It often has automatic detection features and provides detailed logs, which really helps simplify complex jobs. Ideal uses, definitely Android IMEI repair. It supports Qualcomm, MediaTek, even some Intel chipsets. That's a huge plus for standard phone repair shops. It's also excellent for deep EMMC work, resizing partitions, reviving dead chips, doing full writes, Plus, UFS config unlocks recovering dead Samsung UFS chips. It supports various firmware formats like XML scatter files and Qualcomm Sahara Loader 2. Strengths really are. It's often seen as the most complete solution for a typical phone repair shop. Easy software, strong community, lots of readily available firmware files online. Great for both Android flashing and chip level work. That sounds like a really powerful mix, especially for a busy shop floor. Are there any compromises, though? Compared to the others, maybe in terms of raw speed or absolute cutting-edge support, yeah, the main trade-off is probably on the UFS side. Its UFS 3.0 and 4.0 support is more limited compared to Flash 64. And overall UFS performance, even with the add-on, isn't going to match the raw speed of the Flash 64. But crucially, its speed is generally more than sufficient for most repair scenarios. It's built for broad applicability, maybe not for pushing the absolute speed limits like the Flash 64 is. So, okay, let's try and connect this all together, sort of the bigger picture. When you line these four up, you really see the distinct advantages pop out for different kinds of users, right? 
But it also shows something interesting about the industry itself, how it's evolving. You've got these hyper specialized, super fast tools like Flash 64 pushing the boundaries. And then you have these comprehensive, almost shop in a box solutions like UFIS, focusing on ease of use and broad Android support. It's not just what they do, but how they fit into different workflows from niche forensics to high volume repair. So if we try to nail down the key differences, UFS support, Flash 64 is king with full 4.1, Medusa Pro 2 and UFI box handle up to 2.x, Easy JTAG, no direct UFS support, EMMC full access. Good news here, all four offer deep EMMC access. Android tools, especially IMEI repair. UFI box is the clear winner with full support. Medusa Pro 2 has limited capabilities. Flash 64 and Easy JTAG don't really play in that specific Android IMEI space. Speed. Flash 64 is ultra fast. Medusa Pro 2 and UFI Box are, let's say, fast to moderate. Easy JTAG is decent, reliable speed, software UI. UFI Box is generally seen as the most user friendly. Medusa Pro 2 is moderate. Easy JTAG can be a bit technical. Flash 64 is definitely more tech heavy. Forensic use Flash 64, Easy JTAG, Medusa Pro 2, all suitable due to low level access. UFI Box is typically more geared towards general phone repair, less forensically focused in its core design. And price Flash 64 Ultra is high end, the others are more in a moderate price bracket. Okay, so translating that, what does this mean for you, the listener, depending on what you actually do? If you need top tier console NAND repair, or you're doing deep UFS scripting, maybe high speed forensic work, Flash 64 Ultra seems like the premium choice. Choice. It's investment for pushing that envelope. If you're really focused on mastering board level debugging using JTAG, maybe unbreaking older devices, Easy JTAG Plus is that trusted, robust option, and that community support is huge. Need reliable flashing, a secure solution for boot repairs, especially Samsung Qualcomm, maybe in a forensic context. Medusa Pro 2 with its smart card looks like the tool for that. And if you're the all rounder, running a general phone repair shop, needing solid Android tools, good EMMC and UFS capabilities. UFI Box sounds like it aims to be that complete package. Wow. This deep dive really underscores how nuanced this field is. Understanding these differences isn't just about specs on a page, is it? It's about matching the tool to your actual needs, your workflow, and where mobile repair is heading. Exactly. And it raises an important question, maybe something to think about. Remember, Pretty much every chip issue has a potential solution. You just need the right tool, the right approach. So what other technical deep dives are you curious about? What else could help unlock new capabilities for your work? Indeed. There's always more to unpack, always more to learn in this space. Until next time, keep digging for those insights and stay curious.